Hi, Tom here, Flip Anything USA. Hey, today I want to talk to you about misconceptions. So there's so many people that get discouraged from real estate because they're, they're afraid of what they don't know. And I understand this. Everybody seems to things, think things are more difficult than they really are. Real estate is probably one of the biggest things like that. You know, you're not afraid to buy a car. It's kind of the same thing. When you buy a car, you get a title, right? So you got proof that it's your, well, that's kind of what a house is or, or any piece of land is. And so I want to talk about some of the, the common misconceptions that, that I used to have a little bit. And certainly I see many, many people do as I look around on the web, I see the questions that come in. So the number one misconception about buying real estate, I think is people, some people think they need a real estate agent. You don't, you don't need a real estate agent. Now, many times they facilitate the sale because they represent the seller, but many times you're buying without a real estate agent. So people actually go seek out and get an agent for them when they don't need one, and then it just complicates things. So don't get an agent unless there's already one in the loop. Don't bring anybody else in the loop unless, you, unless they're already in the loop, okay? So uh, you, you don't need an agent, so I'm going to put that right here, unless, of course, they have the listing. Uh, now, you can use an agent, and they do serve a purpose, of course. They help you sell your property. A lot of times, they'll put you in touch with a good property. But many of the deals I've found have nothing to do with a real estate agent. And so, don't think you need a real estate agent. You don't need to bring one in the loop. Okay. Uh, you need a lawyer. You don't need a lawyer. Now, many contracts are very complicated, and sometimes you're going to feel like you need one because there's just so much legalese in there. But Fact is, you don't need a lawyer. You don't need them to write your contract. You don't need any of this stuff. Unless you just are so, so, uh, uh, lack so much confidence that you can't write a simple contract that you feel like you need a lawyer. But I don't need a lawyer, and I don't really know anybody that does need a lawyer. Uh, you know, unless it's really a tricky contract, maybe. But I don't use them. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to write, you don't need a lawyer. At least I don't. I'm not telling everybody what to do. I'm just not giving advice. I'm just sharing my experience here. So the other one is you need a pre-prepared, a pre-prepared or prepared contract, uh, you know, that's already done or that, you know, maybe the realtor, you don't need that. You don't need it. You don't need any pre-prepared contracts. So I'm going to write don't on that. So you're, now let's talk about what you must have. You, in, in order to buy a property, I like, I mean, I make deals on buying property on a single sheet of paper. I handwrite the contract many times because I just like to get it done. I don't like to delay. I always say time kills deals. Remember that? Time kills deals. Bringing people in, anything that makes a, an issue bigger is threatening you making a, a deal quick and easy and clean. So uh, what the must-haves are is, number one, you got to have an agreement. If you don't have an agreement, you ain't got a deal. So you need a deal. Number one is you need a deal, okay? And what, what makes a deal is the agreement. So number one, you need an agreement. First you make the deal that you're what you're going to pay for it, you know, and then you need to write that up. That's where you need the agreement. The agreement, number one thing, and believe me, it can be as simple. I have deals that are just as simple as what I'm showing you here. We've got buyer, presumably you. And I talked about it before, buyers, it's going to be your name. You can also write and or assigns. You don't necessarily have to do that. If that makes somebody nervous, don't do it. Just write your name, okay? Then, of course, the seller's name, okay? Then the property description. And now all we're talking about is the address. Now, sometimes a house will come with a, a lot adjacent to it, or a building will come with a lot of, you know, I bought a building one time that had a lot that came with it across the street. I actually bought a school from a school district one time. It actually had another parcel of land that came with it separately. So I would use the address, and then I would say, and the adjacent parcel. If I know the approximate size of that parcel, I would write down, you know, 0.3 acres, or I would write down the actual legal description. But you don't necessarily have that at hand, so you don't need it. Just remember, when you write an agreement, that means something. So it doesn't matter if you have the description exactly right. It doesn't matter. If you say this house at this address in the adjoining property, that's all you need. You now have an agreement. You have something you can stand on and enforce. Okay? So buyer, seller's name, the property description, the address, and maybe a description if it's a vacant lot of the legal description or, you know, a description of the lot and that it's adjoining the property that you have. Then, of course, number one is the price, because the price is going to be, you know, so the price, whatever your, your agreed price is, 
which should be less than it's worth, in my opinion. I, I never paid full price because if the market drops a little bit, you can get stung. So that's my hedge against it anyway. So the prices number is, is of course, also very crucial. And then terms. Now the terms, if you get, you know, there's so many different ways of buying property. Terms might be, uh, you're going to, you have access to the property and you're going to close in six months or two months or three months. My very first deal, I had six months to close the deal with full right of access to the property. And I moved into the property, had the lights turned on and I lived there for six months and used it for my company. And during that six months, that allowed me to save the 10 grand for the down payment. So there is no, nothing set in stone terms, all that stuff, nothing set in stone. So you, a lot of people are so willing to help you with what you need on terms that, you know, cause listen, buyers and sellers come together cause seller wants to sell, buyer wants to buy, and they should be working together to make that happen. And, and that's usually how it is. So, so you've got the terms and that could be how much down, when you're going to close and what you would write down the closing date, when you're going to close the terms, there might be special terms involved, like you know, I mean, basically, you know, here's the down, I'm going to pay the balance on, you know, when we close the deal, you know, or maybe they're going to carry a note for 10 years, very common with land. I've done it also with many buildings. I also carry notes when I sell property, but mostly when I buy, of course, I want to define those terms and, and there's so much money to be made this way. So, uh, cause some of those terms are, you can carry a note and unless you put in an alienation clause, which I don't want to confuse anybody with that, but it's simple. Unless you put a clause in that it's not assumable, you can put the, to together a deal and buy it and have an assumable note, and then you can resell that property. Somebody will assume these terms that you created here in the beginning, and then you might create a second note, or maybe you'll just get cashed out enough that they just assume your note. I sold a restaurant recently. Uh, I think I had a note for $700,000 or maybe some, somewhere around there. Uh, great deal. I had 4% interest on it. Made it very easy for me to resell that restaurant. I sold it for about $200,000 more than I paid for it. And that's actually a pretty recent deal. So uh, back to what you need. Okay, I'm going to run through real quick. Buyer, seller, property description, the price, the terms, like I just discussed. A closing date, of course, the time that it's going to close. Now, the other thing that is crucial in closing this deal and safely for you is you've got to have a title insurance company. That's what I got in here, the must-haves. You've got to have a title company and title insurance. Uh, this is their way of guaranteeing that there's no liens on the property so that when you buy it, it's free and clear. In other words, they're saying here is a clear title. Nobody else can lay a claim on this. And if they do, the title insurance will protect you from that. And I have firsthand on something like that uh, where I bought a property and I actually had to bring, I had to go back and almost sue the title company to, for them to, to, to you know, hold up their, their insurance policy that they had. But don't let that scare you. It was very odd. That's happened to me one out of 200 deals. Okay, so uh, closing costs and title fees. Okay, uh, title insurance policy costs money. Now, depending on how great a deal you get on what you've negotiated, you might just make it easy and say, hey, we'll split everything. You've got to have title insurance. You've got to have it. But uh, it, typically, a lot of times the seller uh, pays for that. But when you're getting a great deal on a property, you don't care. You just say, we'll split everything. We'll split the title fees and the closing costs. Closing costs are basically the, the, the efforts involved with the people that are you know, uh, handling, the, uh, facilitating the transfer of ownership. And that's down at the title company. So uh, remember that. You can write your own contract just as simple as this. Uh, you know, the only questions that come up is that title insurance, you're going to split the cost or, or maybe they're going to pay for it or you're going to pay for it, whatever you want to do. Uh, and then title fees and closing costs. And then, of course, you know, the date. But a, a contract can be that simple and on a single sheet of paper. And, and many people, if you make them feel like if you complicate it, they're going to want to go get a lawyer. They're going to want to go grab an agent. And then the agent's going to want money and the lawyer's going to want money and it's going to make your deal more expensive. So you need to know that you can write your contract yourself. It can be very simple. You can go find a standard contract somewhere that's very simple, but don't complicate it because the main thing is just what I said here, your name, their name, you're going to close it and win. And then when you go to the title company, I mean, once you've got this, you've got power. That's yours. You have the right to buy it. Now you go to the title company and then they'll do what they do to make it all official and legal. And that's it. Okay. So, uh, those are the biggest misconceptions that I've seen. Uh, people thinking they need a real estate agent, they think people thinking they need a lawyer, and people thinking they need to use a specific contract. Not true. So 
that's it. So li listen, I've been doing this since I'm 19 years old. Nothing's changed. Real estate still transfers the way it has always traded in, tra in, in, in between people. So that hasn't changed. Now there's more creative ways for looking for deals and, and we'll get into that too later. But for now, uh, just know that anybody can do it. Anybody can make a real estate deal on their own. Just as long as there's a willing seller and a willing buyer, you guys write it up and you make the deal. Be sure to watch my other videos and be sure to subscribe to this channel. And please share my channel with other people that are like-minded like you. Even the people that are negative. I'm going to dispel all that stuff. It is not, there is, you can make money. You don't have to be uh, particularly educated. You know, I got out of high school very early and I went right to work and I started making right away, making money right away. And so just don't, don't believe that it's difficult. It's not. It is very, very simple to do. It is a very easy thing to do. It's just, it's just doing it. You just got to start getting your feet wet and start looking at it. And then and look at my other videos where I talk about, you know, knowing values because that's the number one thing. You don't want to make a deal unless you know you're getting a deal. And that's why you have to do the homework in knowing what property values are worth. And then you'll know when somebody says, hey, I'll sell it to you for this, you'll go, I'll take it if it's a great deal. Or maybe you'll say, ah, that's too much. I'll give you, you know, this much less. And then it will be a deal if they accept. So that's, that's what I'm going to leave you with today. Flip Anything USA. I'm Tom. And please, questions, comments, give it to me. I want to share. I want to be very comprehensive in trying to give you what's important. So you let me know. And please share it out. Please share this out uh, with your, your friends and family. Thanks.